guys, Perry here. We are at Comic-Con, and right now it's interview time, and I have the cast of Sci-Fi's Van Helsing with me. We have Kelly Overton, Jonathan Scarf, and Christopher Heyerdahl. I got your names right, right? Perfect. I pronounced Great them job. Perfectly. You were perfect. I'm so proud of myself. A show that we've talked about on Collider Nightmares before. We're all really pumped about it, and I'm excited. I'm sad I'm not going to get to see the first look footage, but at least I get to talk to you guys today and get a sense of what the show is going to be, what we have to look forward to. So, first off, we have a Van Helsing show with Vanessa Van Helsing taking place in the future where vampires have taken over the world. You hear this pitch, do you immediately think this is the greatest idea ever or is there some sort of hook that you learn later on where you're like, oh, this is gonna work? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, no. oh, Neil in there, that's, that's awesome, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, thousands of years from now in a galaxy far, far away. That, that's <laughs> yeah. not, that's Something not really like that. No. So what was it that hooked you guys on this idea that made you think this, this is going to be a good series? Well, I mean, I loved the fact that they, you know, switched the gender roles. I thought that was really cool. And I loved, you know, stepping into just a very powerful female kick-ass role. Of, you know, that, that definitely drew me to it. Um, and Neela Butte drew me to it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people involved, actually. Uh, yeah, and I loved that it was a new spin on the vampire genre. I'm really doing something different. Which yeah, there's no blood in this at all. Yes, very pristine. Yeah, yeah. pristine. There's no, there's no fully vi sterilized no vampire bites. show. There's no biting of necks or arms or anything like that. It's just, it's very, it's very, very gentle. Very gentle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not. <laughs> no costumes either. It's a weird sort of staging. <laughs> yeah, the reimagining thing. It's, it's, there's still lots of. I mean, it's vampires. I I've lo I love vampires. I've done a number of vampire yeah. shows. I'm and aware of one of them. Yeah, yeah, and and well, and, yeah, both um, of you actually, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we, okay. We yep, yep, yep. That now we have two we uh, uh, true blood right veterans. Yeah, 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 you two, right back at you. Uh, but it's that same uh, um, dangerous, sensual. Uh, destructive yearning that you know it's a thing of do you want to be vampire do you do you want to remain human and, and is there's, there's a wonderful struggle between what the consciousness is in as a vampire versus what it is to be a human being and sometimes there's I think in a lot of the, a lot of the characters there's a there's a challenge but do we want to stay human or do we want to you know follow this follow the the trend the trend in this world is being vampire Mm -hmm. And and I think sometimes, you know, it's questionable whether or not you want to stick around with the, uh, you know, with us. Ah, that's or interesting. Or if you want to go to the dark mm -hmm. side, it's, it's I pretty like cool. that twist. Yeah. What about in terms of the look of a vampire? Uh, it, do these vampires look like normal people until they reveal fangs or something, or is it something completely different? No, they've got lots of variations on that. They've got all kinds of types of vampires, you know. We've got ancient ones and new ones and ones that have only fed on blood and go down a different road and you know, lose all of their human traits. And they, 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 it's, it, they've got a whole kind of plethora of them in there. It's fun. Is there a makeup effect component to that where their look changes as they yes. become more and more ancient? Okay. Definitely. Oh, sometimes, yeah. 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 Makeup and special effects. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I like the sound of that. And now we There's no missing them. They're definitely, <laughs> definitely vampires the second you see them. They're not disguised as humans ever. They're so yeah. beautiful. You don't have to find a mirror so or something to yeah. figure out. Like, wait a second, yeah. Emma, are you? Yeah. Mm, okay. Are there vampire cliches? Like the idea of not being able to look in a mirror and not going out into the sunlight none, and none all that, that kind of stuff? Of no, that they reimagined all of that stuff. None, yeah. of, the, none of the garlic, happened, none of the none of the yeah. crosses yeah. or the holy water, no. It's How much of the source material are we going to see Not even here? true immortality, I don't think. I think it's <laughs> actual just kind of longer life and different blood types and uh, different, you know, reactions to your emotional reality. Okay, well that's interesting. Are we gonna see much of the Bram Stoker source material in here at all, like little flares of it? Because obviously it sounds very different from the Van Helsing we met in the original, so yes. I imagine it's gonna be drastically different, but maybe some hints at that? Yeah, there's some little flares, especially as the season goes on. Yeah, and can you talk a little bit about your character and kind of what well, I don't know what's... Is someone playing Little Pokemon Go? Turn it off <laughs> now. Dance break. Turn it off. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your character, though? What, what's her ability? What's her fighting style? Does she have specific weapons that she uses in this situation? Um, I think the weapons are interesting. Yeah, She's got all the best weapons. Well, you know, <laughs> she wakes up... <laughs> She wakes up um, from a coma. She's been in a coma for three years, and she wakes up to uh, a post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic world that's um, dominated by vampires. And she discovers that she has uh, certain abilities, special abilities. So, um, yeah, it's uh, that's been a really awesome part of it was discovering all that and just like being a woman who 
um, has to figure out who she is because uh, it's really like an awakening. Um, and for weapons, I mean, it's 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 a free for all. <laughs> You know, Chris has this epic bat that he uses. <laughs> Whatever's um, available. I got a sword. I have a rifle. I have a shotgun. Um, and the fighting style is dirty. Got a mean knife dirty. boot. Yeah, I do <laughs> have a mean knife boot. And it's dirty. It's you know, she's kind of a, she's a bit of a brawler. And yeah, you get so some pr pretty good hands too. Yeah, some good elbows. Yeah. <laughs> and these abilities are we talking supernatural abilities or like Van Helsing, where she's just so smart and she knows all this stuff because he had. God knows how many degrees. Well, she's definitely smart. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. Um, but uh, no, I think it's um, supernatural abilities. Uh, I, I think I'm allowed to say this. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. I am. Okay. So um, she, she has the ability to heal, um, which was so fun to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, this ability, which I think is really cool that, uh, you know, that hasn't been done, I don't think ever before, is that she has the ability to bite vampires and turn them back into humans. Um, so when Chris Ooh. talks about the struggle of, you know, uh, the mentality of being human versus vampire, this is the first time I think you see a lot of people who have been vampires um, become human again after experiencing being a vampire. So. That's pretty cool. Oh my God, I have so many questions about that, but I'm. Afraid and because of that, we all start to realize that she might be humanity's I best mean, hope. That, that sounds like the answer to my first question. That seems like the hook that kind of uh, that's a big deal that makes this special from anything else we've seen with this character or vampires in general. I can't remember the last time we've seen something like that. Yeah, right. It's pretty cool. How do you even act biting someone to turn them back? <laughs> I just imagine that must be really you awkward. You go in the zone when you yeah. wait. Just wait to see it because it's it's wild. <laughs> When, when you see Kelly go into the zone, it's it's trippy when you're on on the sound stage where they're doing it. But when you see it, because I've seen a couple of episodes now, finished, almost finished, and it's it's amazing. Thanks. Amazing. How far along are you guys now? Because I feel like you were just cast in February. So have you shot all thirteen episodes? Oh yeah, we're done. Season one, oh, bam. Wow. Yep. That's nice. Thir thirteen episodes is nice too. How's it been doing this at Sci-Fi also? Because, you know, I I get a little nervous because I like the source material so much. How are you going to turn this into a worthy show? And then I think of a show like Twelve Monkeys, where I think of this movie that I like so much. And how are you going to do that? And it just seems like Sci-Fi is the place to be in terms of expanding the source material in really new, unique ways. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think they really uh, they've completely reimagined the source material, obviously, right? They've, they've, they've taken that as a jumping off point and then given themselves all the license in the world to put it in the post-apocalyptic world, to reimagine what vampires are, how they function, all of those things. So it's um, using the bits and pieces of that source material and then just expanding on it like crazy. And is there a specific location in this po post-apocalyptic world, like a certain city you guys are in? Well, we start out in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start out in Seattle. Desperately want to get to Denver. Yeah. I feel like we're all up, vampire up and down the Oregon coast. happen in Seattle. It's just I mean, so cloudy, that, you know? Isn't that it's like it's like a good yeah. place for them. I'm going to reveal <laughs> how much dangerous. I've seen Twilight. Isn't that a thing in Twilight where they go to Seattle or somewhere up there because it's cloudy and they yeah. can come out? Yeah. I think you're so right. I, yeah. that? I can't believe I knew that. Um, switching gears in the worst Don't transition ever. It's can okay. you tell me about working, no, working great. with Neil? Because I wouldn't expect Neil LeBute to work on, to show run a show like this. So what about his sensibilities? are really making this something special. Well, I think it, it's it's super cool that, that it was Neil. <laughs> that Group took shower scenes, I think that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his the sense twist, of humor. The twisted mind of, yeah, of Neil LeBute. It's true, it's true. Yeah, he's he was wonderful. So, super funny, um, one of the nicest guys you can meet out there, and really collaborative, which I loved about Neil, is that he was so open to your ideas, um, and it, it felt like we were all kind of creating this world together, which I think is really unique. And you've all done TV before. I know Neil's shooting style is is really unique. And I, one of the last things that come to mind is that the movie Dirty Weekend, where they shot it all in one house, mm -hmm. and it was just a very free flowing kind of environment, which I wouldn't expect from you know a, a big production show with all these things going on. So, how how does he? I mean, he's not the director necessarily, but how does he like to keep the vibe on set? Well, no, he's not the director on it, right? So he's, you know, as, as the showrunner, I think the best thing that he was doing was we were in a world where we're running around hiding from various kinds of vampires, and in order for that to not become goofy, all of these characters have to have some real legitimacy to them and, you know, who they are and what their interactions are. And that, you know, Neil was incredible for all of that. It's very rare to work in a television show where 
is you have the writers and the showrunners in the same building. And not mm. just in the same building, they're on the same sound stage. And not just on the same sound stage, they're literally behind the flats of the set. So he set up his team of writers literally right, you know, feet away from where we were playing. So anytime we had any questions, anytime there were any issues going from script to live action, they were there to deal with mm. putting out fires, to deal with ideas, to deal with inspiration. That, that's rare. Oh, it's pretty that's cool. a great touch. Mm -hmm. I like that. We're going to toss it to some live fan questions in a okay. minute. But before we have to wrap this up, I wanted to ask about the directors because I mean, you have a great lineup here. But I'm really excited to see David's work because I'm a big fan of Orphan Black and Ash vs. Evil Dead. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, are there any certain you know interactions with particular directors or special things that they're bringing to the episodes that you guys can highlight? Gosh, all of them. Everyone's, <laughs> everyone's so different. I mean, for Z was great. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Tapping's fantastic, and two v extremely different directors there. Yeah. Priestley, yeah, Coach. Priestley, we love Priestley. Yeah, we call him Coach. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shout out, Coach. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> uh, Why do you call him Coach? <laughs> it's gonna be great. Uh, he's like a coach. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's always with the pep talk, the yeah. coachy pep talk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so positive. It's so positive. It's, positive. Yeah. it's motivating. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> it brings out the best in you. Yeah. Every, everyone had their own. Everyone had their own touch. And yeah, Michael Nankin had yeah, such Nankin, lovely Nankin emotional nuances. Nankin. Dave Razzi's tons and tons and tons of energy and such yeah. an amazing shooter. And then, you know, Amanda Michael comes in and brings three. like 20 years of acting right. to it. So, yeah. It, yeah. You know, it was phenomenal. That's a nice yeah. mix there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do we want to give this a shot? All right. Let's 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 bring in Facebook Live here. This is the fun mm. part. <laughs> this is going to be so interesting. Okay, guys. So I, I'm here with the cast. Do, do we have some questions for them? So I'm assuming this is either a second movie or a new. T yes, this is a new TV series. I can answer that myself. Come on, guys, let's let's get some <laughs> questions here. Well, you never heard about the show, but clearly, clearly you should. There's some really interesting things going on here that you've never seen before in a Van Helsing show. Mm -hmm. Tune I in. I love the positivity, but who who has questions out there? <laughs> Come on, guys. Do you guys do they, do they know that it's gonna uh, there's gonna be a sneak peek on the 31st of July? Yeah, if you guys. We're gonna be the peanut butter of two uh, two Sharknados. Mm -hmm. In the Sharknado sandwich, yeah. The world <laughs> premiere of Sharknado. That's happening Viva Sharknado. on July 31st, guys. After the premiere of Sharknado 4, you're gonna get to see a sneak peek of Van Helsing, so you're gonna want to. Pretty check sure it's like the commercial free hole pilot episode that they're. Drop in there as a little sneak peek. Oh, God. I, well, I'm going to be watching that. All right, here's a question for you guys from yes. Emily Davis. Yeah, Emily. I don't know if this is too spoilery, but favorite villain you fight on the show? Mm. Mm. Ooh, there's so many. Are you allowed to tease any villains? Ooh, we're thinking, we're thinking. Terry and Chan look over is there. Awesome. Ooh, yeah. But he's kind of. A villain, non-villain. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I love beating the yeah, crap out of Terry, Terry Chan. Terry Chan's fantastic. Um, uh, I don't know. I think oh Julius gosh. is pretty, pretty yeah. scary. Yeah, he was a good one. Oh yeah, and Dimitri and Rebecca. Yeah, there's some good ones. Yeah. Rebecca, yeah. Yeah, there's Rebecca? definitely some heavy Ukrainian. You don't know who these people <laughs> some, are. Some heavy Ukrainian um, vibe in the lineage. But yeah, there's don't lots them, of villains, yeah. lots of epic fight sequences, um, big battles. Uh, yeah. Right from the get-go, there's, there's no time wasting. As soon as the, the episode starts, you can see the, the, the sneak peek on the 31st, and the action starts right off the bat. It's awesome. fantastic. I like the sound of that. We'll yeah. take one more question. I like this one here. From J.C. Abbott, what's the vibe, comic or horror? Or maybe a mix of both. Yeah, it, is, it is a mix of both, for sure. Yeah. It's a mix of yeah. both. I'd probably lean it on the horror side. Yeah, yeah. horror. Because uh, they do try to keep it real in terms of the characters mm -hmm. and the people involved. Um, yeah. And so the horror feels like horror as opposed to, and yet it's still comical. very graphic in its in its visual. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yep, awesome. All right, Wendy, I'm going to hand this back to you, and uh, we are going to wrap this up with the cast Thank of you. Sci Fi's Van Helsing right here. So it's going to premiere on Sci Fi September September 23rd. Don't forget that July 31st sneak peek after Sharknado. Check them both out. Thank you guys so much for being here. Congratulations on the show. Thank I cannot you. wait to watch. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thanks Peace. so much. Cheers. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.